everybody. Old guy here. And uh, I tell you, this was a bit of a difficult list to put together because there are not a lot of books that uh, meet the category. That's because I have rarely finished a book that I hated. You know, the, the 50 page rule, even up to the 100 page rule, determines uh, that the book gets tossed across the room rather quickly. Going the distance with something that uh, I hate is either uh, a, a function of forcing my way through, like I had to read the book for a class or something, uh, or something about the last part of the book that uh, completely screwed up everything I read previously, so end up being a book I dislike. So, for your consideration then, and in no particular order. Number 10, Dr. Zhivago by Boris Pasternak. This was downright incomprehensible, and I was completely bewildered when I got to the end of it. If I had not seen the uh, Omar Sharif ver movie version, which is the only movie version worth watching, uh, I would have no idea what was going on. Which is saying something, because uh, the movie itself had a, quite a bit of degree of incomprehensibility to it. I later found out that I was reading a uh, bad translation, and that a much better translation is now available. So, I may have to give this another go, just to see. Number 9, Cujo by Stephen King. Funny how King keeps showing up on my list of books I don't really like that much. Uh, I read this one all the way through because I kept expecting something King-like to happen. You know, a, a psychic kid or a vampire or something. But a rabid dog as metaphor for punishment of your sins? Oh, please. And now I hear he's uh, writing a sequel. Oh, please, no. Number eight. The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. There are not enough words to describe how terribly written this book is, and which is nothing more than Brown's polemic against the Catholic Church, which I guess is the only reason it was published. Number seven, practically everything from Dan Simmons. The Terror, Summer of Night, Drood. Yeah, yeah, I know, Hyperion, which I swear I will read one day. And no doubt will get added to this list, or I will eat crow. Number six, Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. I know. Classic. Loved. The absurdities of war and the people who run them. But I've got a bit of a problem with uh, people who take a dismissive, smug attitude towards a war that was nothing but god-awful and hell on earth and devastating and whose effects still ripple through these present days. You know, it wasn't some war for oil or uh, national corporations, it was the very survival of civilization. And yes, I have no doubt that numerous absurd and downright funny things happened in its course. My dad told me a couple of funny stories about uh, his trip to Berlin on the top of a tank. But to treat the entire thing as just an object of your amusement? Huh. No. Number 5, Cold Mountain by Charles Frazier. What a pile of revisionist crap. Number 4, Forrest Gump by Winston Groom. 
I saw the movie first and ran across the book one day and grabbed it with delight as, oh boy, this is going to be good. And took it all the way to the end and pitched it across the room with contempt. What a load of unadulterated crap. The title character, nothing but an obnoxious schlub who is, generates no sympathy or even much interest. Whoever did the screenplay did a much greater service than this POC, and I don't mean point of contact. Number three, The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. What? Heresy! But, no, I did not like this novel at all. Not only is it turgid beyond belief, but it is kid's book turgid. And yes, I know, it is a kid's book. It was meant initially as a kid's book. But no kid on earth would stand for this long-winded, convoluted word mess. The saving grace, of course, is uh, the introduction of Gollum and Gandalf, but really, not the best of the group. Number two, A Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy Toole. A very long novel about a guy who simply needs to be slapped around for an hour or so. Good Lord, is Ignatius J. Riley obnoxious? Why anybody thinks he is a compelling character, I just can't say. I suppose there are those pseudo-intellectuals who regard stories about obnoxious, self-regarding losers as some kind of social commentary, when it is nothing more than a cautionary tale, uh, which I didn't need to read. And number one, The Firm by John Grisham. It's not that this is a bad novel, uh, it's not that it's terrible, it's just not that good. It's okay. It's all right. Pedestrian. Formulaic. See, the problem is, I read Scott Turo before I read Grisham, and Turo is light years ahead of Grisham. Uh, just is. I mean, the Grisham just pales in comparison. Um, to the point that I have not read any other Grisham novel. I mean, why would you do that when you've got Turo? That's it. I'm sure the list, the list will change as I uh, continue reading more and more. I uh, hear. See you later.